What do you mean we will be made free? I always love this passage. We get it every year on Reformation Sunday, right? John 8, 31 through 36. Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, which is interesting connotation there, right? They had believed in him, which could mean that they don't anymore. Kind of like confirmation students that get confirmed and then never come back to worship. Or did it mean that they had believed in him and they still did? So, But either way, Jesus says to them, if you continue in my word, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. How many of you are free today? I've got like four brave souls that want to raise their hands. Let me ask that question again. How many of you are free today? i got a few more brave souls. So those of you that aren't raising your hands, why do you say you're not free? For the visitors here, this is participatory time. I don't talk all alone. The, the people, you must answer questions. So why did you say you're not free? If, you, if I say, you, or who of you are free today? If you didn't raise your hand, why didn't you raise your hand? I can't, I'm old and I'm half deaf. You got to speak really loud. In the back. Financial debt. Ooh, I like that one. Not, I really don't like financial debt, but that's a good answer. I really don't. The gospel said we're all slaves to sin. We're all slaves to sin. So, but we live in the country that is free, right? Our country is built upon the fact that this is the land of the free, right? This means yes. This means, right? This is the land of the free, so all of us should be free. But we have things that hold us back. And even these Jews said, we are descendants of Abraham. And who are you a descendant of? We are descendants of Abraham too here. Not to put too fine a point on it, but all of us can trace our lineage straight back to Abraham. Jews, Muslims, Christians, Father Abraham. So we are all descendants of Abraham and have never been slaves to anybody. I saw my, my one person that usually smiles when I say the gospel of our Lord very sarcastically smiled at that. Um, does anybody else have an issue with that? When the Jews said we're descendants of Abraham and we've never been slaves to anybody. Do you know the history of the Old Testament? Confirmation kids just did this lesson. So the confirmants have no excuse at this point, right? <laughs> you haven't done that lesson yet. What? I heard something. They're doing their notes. They're doing their notes. <laughs> what happened in Egypt when Joseph got sold into slavery? Joseph went to Egypt and became what? He became a very high officer in, in the Pharaoh's court. And then what happened? Pharaoh died and a new Pharaoh came in. And who became slaves? The Hebrews, the Jews. And what about a little bit after this, when the prophets are speaking, talking about this little thing called the Babylonian exile, where the Jews are taken out of their homeland and taken to Babylon... They're not really slaves per se, but they're not able to do what they want to do. They have to do what the Babylonians tell them to. They have to worship the way the Babylonians tell them to. So there's at least twice in the Jewish history that they've been slaves to somebody. So what do you mean we're descendants of Abraham's? We've never been slaves to anybody. And what about right now? Not right now, now, but right now when Jesus is talking to these Jews who had believed in him. What's happening in their surroundings now? Who did the Jews want Jesus to be? The Messiah, meaning what? 
Freedom from the Romans. They wanted Jesus to be their long-awaited Messiah who was going to lead them into political victory over their oppressors. But we are descendants of Abraham and have never been slaves to anybody. The Egyptians, the Babylonians, the Romans... Let alone that Jesus isn't even talking about political slavery here. He's talking about financial debt. He's talking about needing to get ahead. He's talking about what is that thing that is square in front of your face every day. That hangs in front of you and looms in front of you and keeps you captive to not be able to do the things that God is calling us to and leading us to. Because all of us are slaves to something. Now here's the next tricky question to all of this. Can we ever not sin? I'm not even going to say that this is yes, because this is no. This is no, right? No, we can't. There's no way that we will ever stop sinning as long as we are in this place, in this body, in this world. It's impossible. But are we held down by that sin? If you are a preacher of grace, then preach a true, not a fictitious grace. And if grace is true, you must bear a true and not a fictitious sin. God does not save people who are only fictitious sinners. Be a sinner and sin boldly, but believe and rejoice in Christ even more boldly. For Christ is victorious over sin and death in the world. And as long as we are here, we have to sin. This life is not the dwelling place of the righteous. But as Peter said in 2 Peter 3.13, we look for a new heaven and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, pray boldly, for you too are a mighty sinner. Sin, Be a sinner and sin boldly. Martin Luther wrote to his fellow reformer Philip Melanchthon on the 1st of August in 1521. Be a sinner and sin boldly. Is this a license to go out and do whatever we want? No. What this means, to paraphrase, to put it into modern day language, get off your butt and do something because God has freed you from worrying about anything that's going to hold you back. So He's given you the power. He's given you the grace. He's given you the mercy to go out into the world and to do something. For his love. And if you screw up, he's going to forgive you. As I read this lesson and I thought about these two. You thought that first stab was it. Have you thought of your questions yet? As I read this lesson and I thought about these two fine young people sitting down here, the movie Braveheart came to mind. How many of you have seen Braveheart? It's a movie about William Wallace, right? A a good Scottish man who um, tried to stop England from coming and taking over their lands, right? He talked to his people about freedom and what they were going to do with it and how the army that they had amassed was nowhere near the size of the army that the English were coming against them with. But they could run and hide and live in the tyranny, in the bondage of England, or they could stand and fight and possibly die for freedom. And what does it mean to be truly free? But I thought about this this lesson and the two of these two fine young people and I thought about the end of the movie. I'm not going to get too much into it, but if you've seen the movie, you know the very almost the very last scene where William has been captured by the English king. The English king is dying and they're torturing William Wallace. And he's waiting, the king is waiting to die to hear William Wallace to cry for mercy because that's all the king wants is for this man to finally just give in and give over to the tyranny. 
And as he's laying there on the, the block being tortured, the, the man says that our prisoner has a word to speak. And it goes quiet and it all goes back. And William Wallace shouts at the top of his lungs. Freedom! And the king opens his eyes real wide like, that's not what I was supposed to hear. Because even in the end, even when he knew that it would bring him to a quick and sudden death, rather than prolong his agony, this man chose to live out his life the way that he knew he was supposed to. It's kind of like them getting out of confirmation, right? They're going to come up here and get confirmed, and they're finally going to stand up and go, Freedom! If you've learned anything over the past three years, two years, I hope that it's that God does not give us a spirit of fear or a spirit of anguish. But God gives us a spirit of love, as your verse verse talks about. And God gives us the hope to move forward in him. And God gives us the power and the understanding To go out into the world and do the things that He's calling us to do. And in that you have to be brave and know that Christ has already brought the freedom for you. Because it's not about messing up. It's about getting out there and trying to do what God is leading each and every one of us to do. It's about getting out there and following through on what Christ has said to each and every one of us. If you continue in my word, you will know the truth. And that truth will set you free. It will set you free, not from committing sin, but from the bondage that sin can have upon you. Because my truth says that if you follow me and you love me, that I will forgive you for everything that you've done wrong. And if you follow me and love me and go where I'm sending you, I'm always going to be with you. And I'm always going to carry you. And I'm always going to give you the strength to be the person that I've called you to be. That's what this is about. That's what faith is about. Believing that promise. That Christ has already set you free. And loves you enough not to leave you there but to walk with you into the world so that everyone can know how much He loves all of His creation. So go, following where He leads you, knowing that He loves you. And get off your butts and do something. Because if you screw up, God will forgive you. And He needs you to go and show the world His love.